back in, Weaver got it, yes! Team to shoot, pull back, step back, three, bottom! The handoff, Jones for the time, oh, oh he's fouled, and one! He's still loose, Doherty the heave, oh my god! Southern Utah. Oh, wow! Southern Utah is going to do something they've never done. Happy Friday, everybody. It is another episode of the Straight Out of Whack podcast coming at you. Uh, the last podcast episode of the week, we're going to do a Straight Out of Whack after hours tomorrow. I probably will be doing it from either my hotel room or the American First Event Center where, I'll be, where I will be when Utah Valley takes on Southern Utah in Cedar City tomorrow night. Um, good ball game. Another in-state rivalry here in the state of Utah. I-15, you know, trip three hours south. From Orem to Cedar City. So it should be a fun atmosphere. There was an exciting atmosphere last year at the AFEC when I was there with my with my dad watching that ball game, Tevin Jones with the big shot before halftime. And Southern Utah kind of controlled the second half. So should be a fun one. Rob Jeter's team is struggling a little bit. Utah Valley has two blowout wins um, in their past two games, especially that win last night, 23 point win at CBU. Ooh. So it should be an interesting ball game. Anyways, so I'll be down there. We will have that straight out, out of whack after hours again. We had it last night on Thursday night after some wild ball games. I went to the CBU Utah Valley women's game that went to overtime 92 89 for the Wolverines. That sets the stage for an interesting matchup on Saturday. It was going to be for first place in the whack, and it still kind of is. But now that CBU's lost a game, lost their second game of whack play. It'll only be for a tie for first place if CBU was to win uh, when they host GCU at Fowler Event Center tomorrow afternoon. Uh, I'm going to have a special guest on this episode of the Straight Out of Whack podcast in just a little while. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit. But remember, everybody, all session tickets are available for WAC Vegas right now. You go to waxsports.com slash WAC Vegas. Click on the info to buy your tickets for all sessions uh, at the WAC tournament. You get 14 games, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 4, 8, 12, 14 games. Yes, I keep, I, it's so screwy. I don't know. I'm sorry. I apologize. But uh, you get access to all 14 games if you're there in Las Vegas the entire week. I'll be down there Wednesday through Saturday again. Um, and remember, the women's championship game is at 1030 a.m. Pacific time. Um, it'll be on ESPNU. And then the men's championship game isn't until 830 that night, uh, which I believe is on ESPN two, uh, it's, yeah, and one of the in se- the second semifinal for the men is on ESPN Linear Networks as well. So, looking forward to that. We are what 13, 16, 26 days, twenty six days from the WAC tournament tipping off. That's exciting. That, that's absolutely exciting. Anyways, just remember to go to waxsports.com slash WAC Vegas. Follow. Kendra's commands in this advertisement. Wax Vegas is back. The best fans, championship basketball, all in exciting Las Vegas. Join us March 13th through the 16th at the Orleans Arena for the 2024 Hercules Tires Wax Basketball Tournament. Don't miss the crowning of a men's and women's champion. For more information, go to waxsports.com slash waxvegas. Uh, a couple of things on Wax Vegas. Just a reminder, the top four seeds get a bye. The three and four seeds get a bye to the quarterfinals on Thursday. And the one and two seeds get a bye to the semifinals on Friday. I'm pretty sure that GCU, both GCU squads will be playing on Friday. They won't be playing on Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday, uh, but they'll both be playing on Friday. Right now, it's looking more and more like Tarleton men is going to be playing on Friday as well. But we're going to see how they play down the stretch here. CBU is kind of in that mix uh, on the women's side to play on Friday, but we'll see what happens. Like, it's just crazy what's going on, except for the GCU squads, who I think both have at least a top two seed locked up. GCU men pretty much have the one seed locked up. The GCU women... If they get a win tomorrow, Saturday afternoon at CBU, probably have the one seed locked up, but stranger things have happened. So we'll wait and see. But 
It's a ladder bracket. Only eight teams make it. Three teams are getting left out. It is a crowded mess in the standings right now. Especially on the women's side, you have UTRGV, Tarleton, Southern Utah, and Utah Valley all at either 4-10 and 10 or 4-9. and 9. UTRGV is 4-9. and 9, The other three are 4-10. and 10. And then Skyler Young, Seattle U Redhawks have won two in a row to kind of put themselves in a position at 3-11 and 11 in wide place. So who's getting left out? Okay. Uh, Abilene Christian's at 7-6. and six. UT Arlington and Utah Tech are both at 8-6. and six. Stephen F. Austin, 9-4. CBU and Grand Canyon have already locked up their spot in White Vegas. So, so nine teams are playing for six spots right now. That's on the women's side. On the men's side, it's kind of similar, not quite. Um, right now, Abilene Christian and Southern Utah are two games back of Utah Tech and Utah Valley for that seven and eight spot. Um, Utah Tech and Utah Valley are both six and eight in whack play. Abilene Christian is Southern Utah. Abilene Christian is 4 and 9. Southern Utah is 4 and 10. And then you have UTSV, who's 2 and 11. They're kind of getting close to that. Um, they have 13. They play 13 games. They have seven left. They're four back of that eight spot. I mean, a Utah Tech win on Saturday against Seattle and a Utah Valley win on Saturday at Southern Utah could. Uh, not quite. I was going to say it could eliminate UTRGV. Um, they host UT Arlington on Saturday, and then they're at Utah Valley. So next Thursday, they could potentially be done. Um, their run, their their chance to get to WAC Vegas could be done. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah. Anyways, GCU men have locked up their spot. Tarleton last night with its 80-78 win. At UT Arlington, locked up its spot. Uh, Seattle U's 8-6, and six, California Baptist, Stephen F. Austin are both 7-6. and six, Then UT Arlington's at 7-7. Seven and seven. So there's a lot to be decided. The Rack Resume seating system was updated today. Um, Grand Canyon pretty much just locked up to one seed. There's like no chance that Tarleton's going to catch them. So who's going to be the two seed? Seattle U has a chance to catch them. Don't know that they will. With uh, Seattle U has six games to play. Same with Tarleton. They have six games to play as well. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Tarleton doesn't play until next Thursday when they host Grand Canyon. Seattle U is at Utah Tech on Saturday. Uh, right now, here's your, here's your men's seating system. Right now, I was, as you can see, Grand Canyon has a significantly. There's nobody's going to beat them. Nobody's going to. So they have the one seed locked up. If Tarleton was to win the WAC tournament, Grand Canyon would go to the NCAA tournament because that's what it's based off of is the seeding system. So, yeah, that's that's where we're at. Stephen F. Austin is now in the fourth seed if they can clinch UT Arlington, California Bass. So, I mean, it's basically played out. It's similar to what the WAC standings are showing right now um, in terms of the rankings. So, I, I'm curious to see if it stays that way depending on what happens. but. Um, right now it looks like we're going to get, I can't remember the bracket. I'm going to have to look at it here. I'll show you so we can see what the bracket looks like. Um, I thought they had a bracket here, but they don't. So, uh, Wednesday we get the five seed versus the eight seed, six seed versus seven seed. So right now. If we're looking at it, if the WAC tournament was to start today, we'd have UT Arlington taking on Utah Tech and then Utah Valley taking on California Baptist. I'm not sure California Baptist wants that matchup because Utah Valley has had their number big time this year. They just swept them with that 23-point win in Riverside last night, uh, another double-digit win over the Lancers for the Wolverines. So. Not sure they want to see that. Um, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what happens, who lands where. But that's where we're at right now as we get closer to WAC Vegas. So coming back after the break, we will talk with our guests on this podcast to get some perspective on a five-game winning streak 
and not just a five game winning streak, but a very impressive way of winning ball games, including holding two of the best offensive teams in the league to season lows in points. So stick with us. We'll be right back uh, after this commercial. Wack Vegas is back. The best fans, championship basketball, all in exciting Las Vegas. Join us March 13th through the 16th at the Orleans Arena for the 2024 Hercules Tires Wack Basketball Tournament. Don't miss the crowning of a men's and women's champion. For more information, go to waxsports.com slash Vegas. Back to the Strandler Wack Podcast. I told you we were going to have a special guest live from Riverside. GC Women's Basketball Head Coach Molly Miller. Molly, hopefully the trip from St. George to Riverside was just fine. I, I think it's probably better after a win like you guys had on Thursday night, but... Uh, how are things in Riverside as you guys get ready for a pretty big game on Saturday? Yeah, it was smooth. Um, but, yeah, we've been preparing, so I can't tell you much about uh, the outdoors. But uh, the, the coaches have kind of been working on a scout. And um, definitely our goal was to win the next one, which was Utah Tech. And so we hadn't really done much with Cal Bap. But, um, yeah, now we're burning the candle at both ends for sure. Uh, we not understand that. This is a big game for for both teams. Um, they're a very good team, well coached, and um, I'm excited to get the opportunity to play them. I want to I want to ask you something. Daryl and I were talking about this on our um, Strato Whack after hours last night after all the games were done. So you guys beat Utah Tech by 44, I believe it was last night. Uh, earlier, a couple of weeks ago, you beat UT Arlington by 35 down there in Phoenix, um, and that all came after that loss to SFA at home. You've won five straight now and all of them have been by double digits. You beat two of the best, two of the better offensive teams by holding them to their lowest output of the season. What changed after that loss to SFA that you guys have like ramped everything up? And I think it's the GCU squad that you thought you were going to have that everybody thought you were going to have what changed after that loss? Like sometimes you, it awakes a sleeping giant. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. I, I think that's a, a small part of the whole. I definitely think it's a, um, it was an emphasis. It kind of gives you a shot in the arm, a wake up call, whatever you want to call it um, in terms of understanding some of your weaknesses and how you need to um, approach every day and every game. But, also, I mean, I think the big thing for us, we hadn't had a lot of consistency with a rotation or how we were playing. You know, we were, we were playing really good, and all of a sudden our two preseason all-conference kids goes down with an ankle within minutes of each other. Um, we also didn't have Jada for the first part of the season. So what didn't really hurt us was not necessarily their absence because I thought we did a really good job of stepping up and filling in. But when you – add them back into the mix when you're playing so well it's like take two steps forward maybe to go 10 or t- two steps back to maybe go 10 steps forward but there is a little bit of um learning curve there when you're trying to mix in pieces pieces get taken away you try to add them back in um and we were playing really good i think i thought middle tennessee state for us was our turning point it's like oh there's the team and then all of a sudden they go down and we had to you know, go back to the drawing board. So I think this is a team now that, um, you know, knock on wood is, is healthy. And when you've got a rhythm going, we've kind of found our identity, but that takes some time. And when you're shuffling pieces around, that's not a smooth transition to how you want to go or where you want to get to. And it never is right. Everyone's dealing with availability or injuries. And so for us, I think we've done a good job of staying the course but even in that loss against SFA, it, it was kind of like a, all right, this this is our team now. What are we going to do with it? You know, we, we can't just sit here and hope for the best and wish for the best. We actually have to work for the best. And now that we have the pieces all in place and there's not a lot of confusion, roles at this point are pretty much established. Um, and for us, it's just moving forward with that. And the kids have done a phenomenal job of kind of staying the course. I, I would say... Uh, rough seas never made good sa- or, or smooth seas, calm seas never made good sailors. So <laughs> I think that's where we have to kind of now, you know, steady the ship and understand like this is where we're at and how do we move forward and put the best um, product out there that we can. And I'm, I'm really liking where we're at so far. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I got I got to ask about that when you when you have players go down, you know, Tiara and Trinity and and so forth, and you get those rotations mixed up a little bit from your customers throughout the season. Then you get them back, and now everything's kind of flowing right. How impressed are you with your team and the fact that they were able to handle that without really missing a beat? I guess you could say. That's that's tough because it's almost like a push and pull of roles, you know, all of a sudden, you know, my minutes changed because of this addition and my minutes fluctuated because of that subtraction, like that's tough, I think. And I, I think our kids have been super mature about it, but from the get go, we've talked about sacrifice and what that looks like to sacrifice for your team, because we knew this summer when we got this group together, it was a collective group of talented players. You know, we, we had some transfers that were, starting for their teams that are coming off the bench for us. And that is what the winning sacrifice is all about. So we can always reference that because we've talked about that from the very, very beginning. And now that it's kind of become a reality with roles taking shape in different ways at different parts of the season, um, that true sacrifice is kind of what our team is, has held on to. And that's where I, I, I'm very, I'm beaming as a coach and I'm very proud of our kids to be able to take a step back and do what's, whatever's best for the team. Molly, um, you know, you talk about that stretch where you didn't have uh, Trinity and Tiara. Um, we saw Sydney Erickstrup break into the lineup, win a WAC Newcomer of the Week award, and average, I believe it was 15 points per game by the time it was all said and done with her starting by the time those two came back. Talk about just her play in that stretch and how crucial it was to fill the gap there. Yeah, Sid's uh, a great example of not only sacrifice, but staying ready. And I think for her, when she was able to, to, to stay ready, because she was getting some spot minutes at the beginning of the year, then she had to replace Tierra, who went down and was ready for the opportunity. That's what we tell our kids. It's, it's not that your opportunity won't come. It's are you ready when your opportunity comes? And if you're in this mind space of, you know, why isn't me or at this point in time, or I don't understand the substitution patterns, or if you get caught up in that, when your opportunity comes, you won't be ready. And so Sid is a perfect example of staying ready, staying positive. She came to practice every single day and worked regardless of her role. And so then when Tierra came back, she's in the lineup, she's in the rotation now because she deserved that and she earns that. And she's able to, you know, give Tierra some much needed and deserved breaks and still be you know, a presence for us out there. So those those kids stepping up when we needed to them, that's just a testament of them staying ready when the opportunity came calling and then continuing to be ready now that they've kind of proven that they can make a difference and be an impact on the court for us. I want to ask you now, you know, big matchup on Saturday, obviously, in Riverside. Daryl is kind of going back in. And he, like I said, he's in a softball game, so his service may not be great. Um, but... CBU, you guys haven't played each other yet. Is that kind of weird? I have to ask this, that you you played, what, 14 games now in WAC play, and there's teams that you haven't played at least once right now? Like, is that weird to be prepping for the first time for a team this late in the season? Yeah, it is a little different. Here we are, you know, mid-February, and we played a handful of teams twice, and um, CBU, we haven't seen yet, but you have to play everyone twice anyway. So I guess right. that falls on the calendar. It doesn't really matter. Um, so, you know, here we are now and we'll see them at their place and then, um, they'll turn around pretty quickly and come to ours. And then, um, you know, who knows what Vegas will hold, but you gotta, in this, in this league, you just have to stay ready. You know, we've seen, um, you know, some teams at the bottom take out some teams at the top, um, some teams in the middle fight their way for, positioning so it's an important time of year whoever you're playing whenever you're playing them i'm gonna bring daryl back in daryl you got any last questions for molly molly i just want to talk about the improvement you guys have shown it from the three-point line this year the highest three-point percentage since you got to phoenix um just talk about you know the way your sh shooters have put the work in in the gym this offseason nadia evans trinity san antonio anna ostley um yeah. just the work they've put in from the three-point line this, this year because you guys are shooting at near 40 percent from beyond the arc yeah I, I think you evaluate once the year is over and for me this has been building blocks i can't have everything at once so first i knew i wanted to recruit to the defensive system that was really important to me and i i believe you know that got us our our quick start is 
um, the brand of defense we played. Um, then when we started to um, plug in some recruits, especially from the portal, that was a thing that we knew was a void for us. So when you're looking at Anna, um, you know, Trin, even the Eric Strip twins with Sid and, and her capability to shoot the three, um, we brought in some of that talent to be able to help us be a more well-balanced team, both on the offensive end and the defensive end. But then you look at our returners. I mean, Nadia lives in that gym, you guys. I, that is no embellishment. I've had to kick her out over the summer because I didn't want her to get too worn down with her body and, and she just loves it. And so that's a testament why she wants the ball in her hands and the clutch. She wants to take the last shot. She has confidence to take the last shot and why she's one of the best shooters in the WAC right now. So that's a testament to the kids um, work, you know, that Nadia really thinks work is the reward. And now you can see what the reward is for her. Okay. I got to ask, well, this my, this is the last question we have for you before let you go be ready to see you. Uh, how, what are you telling Trinity and Sid, as they get ready to go back, I mean, Sid's been with you uh, now for a couple of years, but Trinity, it's her first time back to CBU after transferring over. Any talk to her about keeping her cool, staying focused on what you guys are trying to do instead of worrying about doing something special against her old team, or is it just go play your game? Yeah, they're mature enough to understand that there's going to be some outside noise. There's going to be added elements to this matchup. But we've always talked about let your game talk. You know, um, dive on the floor for a loose ball, make the extra hustle play, rebound a little bit harder. You know, your your game can say a lot how invested you are into um, not only the sport, but, you know, the program and winning. And so it's not something that um, we're, we're, we're talking about every day, but obviously you're not going to sweep that under the rug when there is some outside noise and chatter. But Again, those are mature players that um, I believe can handle those type of situations and understand that winning's important. And that is the priority right now is winning the next game. And it so happens to be against, um, you know, teams, a, a team that they played for. But at the end of the day, I think they, they're both winners and they're both mature competitors. And that's what I expect to see out on the court is just two teams with um, players that want to go to battle who have a passion for this game of basketball and, um, I think you're going to see a really good game tomorrow. All right, Daryl, we're going to let Molly Miller go. She's got prepped for a big game tomorrow. It's an afternoon tip off too, which uh, are you a fan of those or would you rather play that later at night? Let's just let, let's throw that out there. Oh, again, when, where, how, it doesn't matter <laughs> to me. I, I just love competition. So we'll do it whenever. Oh, that's awesome. Love it. Love it. Molly, appreciate the time. Good luck tomorrow. And uh, should be a fun one in Riverside. Thanks for having me. All right, guys. That was Molly Miller, head coach, GC Women's Basketball. And uh, we're grateful that she was able to come on today while she was uh, getting ready for CBU. So we'll be right back. Wax Vegas is back. The best fans, championship basketball, all in exciting Las Vegas. Join us March 13th through the 16th at the Orleans Arena for the 2024 Hercules Tires Wax Basketball Tournament. Don't miss the crowning of a men's and women's champion. For more information, go to waxsports.com slash waxvegas. All right, guys. That is it for this Straight Out Wax podcast. Remember, hit the like and subscribe button. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll be back with a Straight Out of Wax after hours tomorrow evening after Saturday's games. Uh, again, we just got done talking with CBU or GCU, excuse me, GCU head coach Molly Miller as she preps her team for their big matchup with California Baptist. Uh, I believe it is three or four wins away from winning the regular season title for the Grand Canyon women's basketball team. The tip off is at 1 p.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Phoenix time from Riverside, California, tomorrow afternoon at Fowler Event Center. So, should be a fun one on the women's side. Anyways, Everybody, again, enjoy the basketball tomorrow, and we'll see you on the Straddle Whack After Hours show tomorrow night on the YouTube channel. It'll also be streamed to Twitter and to Facebook. I should just do it on the YouTube channel, so you go there and you subscribe. Either way, thanks for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode of the Straight Out of Whack podcast. Thanks for listening to the Straight Out of Whack podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and other podcasting platforms. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Remember to follow Wack Hoops Nation on all your favorite social media platforms.